Hello, today I just wanted to give you a couple of quick tips on how to make simple portraits that you can continue to improve layer by layer until they're up to the level you want them to be. My name is Lucy. I'm an art teacher at Main Connections Academy. So I want to say lots of people who think that their work is terrible, they're actually not as bad as they think. But it takes um, a lot, a lot of practice to get from where you're at to where you want to be. And sometimes, as in this example, it's just a matter of how much time you spend working on it. This is a, like a, a one minute picture and this is like a five, 10 minute picture. Um, it takes time to put in the work to, to make something more and more realistic. But does it have to be realistic to make it the point across? Sometimes a gesture drawing can get to have so much impact. Um, these simple magic marker drawings just had some color added in them and they improved quite a bit. This is magic marker only. Now, in these two pictures, we have two different versions of the same, the same photo. And I got this photo at Unsplash. It's by Nathan Dumlau. Um, and the original photo has these three children uh, laughing and playing together. And you can see this one, I've added more outlining with a, with a permanent marker, a thin um, tight, fine line marker. And this one, I just use the colors to separate things. So style, your style is gonna make a difference in what kind of art you get. Um, this was done from a tutorial with uh, art professor Clara Liu. And, and these were done with magic markers and I just blended the color after I drew the simple outlines. So let's talk a little bit about when we want to draw someone, where, where do we start? Most people do start with something simple like a circle. Back to here. All right, so I've got these circles and I've got them looking in different directions. I'm looking at the top of the head. This one's upside down. This one's looking up. This one's looking down. This one's. And when I want to have a character looking in a certain direction, what I would, what I do, uh, if I'm just starting with a simple circle, is I'd say, okay, I want him looking this way. So that's where I'm going to point this nose. I'm going to point the nose in the direction they're looking. And then I put an eye on each side of the nose and a mouth under it. And it can be just a simple line mouth. And that gets me to another thing. Faces, faces do not have to be complicated to get the point across. You can do it with five lines. Or you can do it with three dots. Faces can be, well, we can do five dots. Um, faces can be quite simple and, st and our mind will still uh, understand that they are faces. So if you give them a neck and, a, and some shoulders and there you are, you have some people. All right, I think I wanna give this guy a little nose too. All right, so it, they can also be different shapes. So if I have eyes, ears in here, I'm gonna put the eyes between the ears. Just imagine the glasses are uh, coming across from ear to ear and the eyes are going to be in between that space. And the nose, below that, mouth is below that. And there you are. This guy has a very thin neck, maybe a very long neck and shoulders. So it can be a simple process to make a person. And then of course you add hair. She has long hair. This person, I don't know if this is a guy or a girl, but this person has long wavy hair. I can add more detail to the eyes. So the next step I might wanna look at is Blue's not a realistic color for me. Maybe I'm thinking more orange. Um, maybe I'm thinking I want 
more the shape of a real head, like with a forehead and, and sides of the face and the jaw and the chin. So in that kind of face, it's this shape and this shape that we're going to do basically the same thing. One, two, three, four, five lines to make the face. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Am I saying five? I. Oh, yeah, five. There we go. Let me just put a little line on there for the other lip. Uh, you can add details to the eyes. You can add eyelids. You could uh, change the shape of the nose. Instead of just a line, you could do the curve and then the nostrils. Instead of just a line for the mouth, you could do some lips. For the eyes, you could curve the eyes. And he's off the side. I don't know what kind of hair he has, so let's just give him some short hair. Another thing you can do with magic markers that I kind of find interesting for the next level would be to get my, um, I'm not going to go all the way to paints just yet. These are water-based markers. So what I'm going to use, what I'm going to use is uh, uh, just a wet brush. So just a moment and I'll get that. So with just a, a little bit of water and a wet brush, I can take these places that are dark and just spread the color into other areas of shadow, like under the brows, under the cheek, like in that piece of uh, where the teeth are in the jaw, maybe under there, kind of around the chin, under the chin, there we go sides of the head forehead because you have the front of the forehead and then you have the sides of the forehead you can lightly blend this all the way across not too wet or else you're just going to wash everything away or you can choose certain areas to bring the color to it's even effective to just bring color to what spread the color on one half of the face i didn't even pay much attention to which half i mean and then after this is dry, of course, you can go in and reinforce some of the details, like the eyebrows. Because I didn't draw any eyebrows on anybody. And here can be simple or it can be complicated. It's up to you how much detail you want to put into it. All right, so you've gone from you know, just a circle with a nose and some eyes. And we're moving on. But why is this circle a slightly more realistic than the smiley face that we usually see? Why, why does it look a little bit more real? Well, one reason it looks more real is on an actual person, the eyes aren't way up in the forehead like they are on the smiley face we usually see. The eyes are usually closer to the middle. And about halfway between the eyes and the chin is where the bottom of the nose is. And a third to a half down is where the mouth is. It just kind of depends on whether the mouth is open or closed and everybody's a little bit different. So just kind of look between the nose and the chin. And it also depends a little bit on the shape of the chin. You know, if the person has a long face or a short face. so. Don't let that trip you up too much if it's different than, oh, in class they told me it would be halfway. Well, it kind of depends on if the person's looking up or looking down as well. I mean, if a person is looking downward, their eyes are going to be lower than if they're looking upward. We're going to see the top of their head if they're looking downward. But this smiley face has the eyes where the forehead should be. All of our like emojis and stuff that the eyes are way up and it's like the whole expression is expanded to fill up the whole face. But on an actual face, it's kind of in this lower half here. 
So let's go to the next step. We're, we're gonna, gonna go from the simple face to a face that has more shape to a face that has some shading, and then you'll watch how that progresses. So even if I don't bother too much about the shape of the face, just give the chin just an oval shape, and I don't bother too much about the hair, just kind of just finish that oval. About halfway, I'm going to have these ears. And between the ears, if I just put an eye there, skip a space and then put an eye there, this is going to give me pretty good relationship on the face. And then the, I'm going to put the eyebrows in right away so I don't forget them. Often on the eyes, people want to draw the entire colored part of the eye, the entire circle, but some of it is underneath the eyelid. So just draw it a little bit higher and like a U shape instead of a complete circle. You can put the center of the eye, almost the whole thing there. And if I want a little highlight on it, I'll just won't color the whole thing. Now, I want the center of this eye to be black. Grab a colored, well, that's blue. Okay. Here, I have a black marker. Oh, and it's good because this is a permanent marker, so it won't wash away when I add some water. Suppose I want to add some eyelashes too. We might see a few eyelashes over here thinly, but towards the side of the eye when it's curving away like this, we're going to see them kind of piled up on each other. That's why on the edges of the eye, we're seeing them a little bit from the side piled up so that it looks darker and, and thicker over here. You can kind of see the side of the eyelashes and they look a little darker and thicker as it's curving if you're looking at it several layers at once. So over here, un between the eyes, let's go down and put the center of the nose. Remember, it's at the bottom of the ears. We got the top third, the middle third, and the bottom third. This is where the nose goes, the right here on the middle third. And then I'm going to put parentheses around it. So I've got the part that curves down and the nostrils and then the sides of the nostrils. There's a couple of little uh, there's a groove right there, and you can sometimes see the edges of that groove. The, I'm going to take this eye out, uh, this lip out to about the middle of the eye. Now, if I was copying an actual person, I would pay more attention to how wide, how thick, whether the nose was in the middle or was off to the side. I'd pay more attention to that, but I'm just making this up on this one. So now let's look out where underneath the jaw there might be some shading. And the chin here, you might see some shading, sides of the head. And underneath the hair, if the hair is going over the forehead, you might see shading under the hair too, if the light's coming from above and it's hitting the hair. So what kind of hair does this person have? Well, we just said it was kind of sticking out a little. So I don't have a problem with messy hair. Mine looks messy a lot. Just today's hair. I just decided to go crazy because of the humidity. When you're looking at the neck, you're gonna have to think from the angle you're looking at, are, you, is the, are the shoulders more showing here? Or do you see a little bit of the neck? You pay attention to where the neck intersects with the chin and where the shoulders intersect. Like the chin, the neck might be coming down a little bit, but we're not really noticing it because the shoulders are there. And we're gonna give it, give this person a, a shirt. Any shirt will do. How about this blue striped shirt? So what you're looking for is simple shapes. We've got an oval here. We got some long stretched out kind of C curves for the ears. Um, 
the nose is a curve down and then a couple of curves up and some parentheses curves. Uh, the mouth is kind of the line of the mouth with the lips added. All right, so now I'm going to just take that same effect we had before. And I'm going to take this shading from the cheek down into the jaw area. I'm kind of going around a little the mouth a little because there are some muscles in there that make our mouth move. So I'm not going to go all the way in there. I'm going to kind of just make a parenthesis around the mouth. In older people, that even look, forms a wrinkle because it's often moved there their whole life. And then the eye is round underneath the skin. So I'm just going to kind of come around like that. And then up to the forehead and under the hair here. And we've got some shadow here right on the fold of the lid that's just right over the eye. You curve that a little bit. You'll have to study your person to see um, just how close this little crease is to the eye. All right, and then there's, when you look at the bottom, sometimes you can see a little, it's a little bit thicker there because you can sometimes see the, the edge of the skin. Sometimes it's not that noticeable. Um, if you look at a contouring highlighting kind of video, you can um, get some idea where to put these shades too. Just look at the picture that you have for sh shadows and go light with it. You don't have to go really harsh with these shadows. Whoops, I've got some blue in there. Might have to let that dry a little before I blend it too much. All right, so now I'm going to make the shirt blue with some just plain water. If you have kids and you want them, they want to paint, but you don't want them to make a huge mess, um, draw something with markers or let them play with markers for a while and then give them a wet paintbrush, or a paintbrush with just a cup of water. And uh, let them do this kind of thing. If the, if the paper's too thin to get wet, the paper can only soak up so much when it's thin. It'll get buckled, but I don't think young kids mind that much. And so just by adding some shading to this space, you're able to give it um, more shape and dimension. Now there's some shading underneath the, this point of the nose. And it's going to go down here towards the mouth. And there's some shading underneath that lip. The lips itself will have some color too, and you can add that later with a colored pencil or whatever you want. All right, so this is a pretty simple way to make a portrait that has more realism than, you know, just like the oval face. Um, but even with just a few curves, you can make realistic face if you know where to put things. Remember the forehead third nose and eyes third, and then the mouth and chin third. And the middle nose and eyes third is where you're going to put your ears. I hope that helps you out to go from a simple portrait cartoon style to something a little bit more realistic. And the better you get at shading and mixing colors and finding those proportions in your picture, the more realistic this will get. Thanks for visiting me today. My name is Lucy, and I hope that you visit us again for more art tips.